Many thanks for keeping company with me on the market. Please welcome back. Plans by government to only accept electronic payments for all transactions are now set to begin before March this year. However, it will be rolled out using selected government institutions and agencies. Communications Minister Esla Ousu Ekufo disclosed this to Joy Business on the sidelines of the Ghana Investment Promotion and Opportunities Summit in London. George Yafi has more. Now, according to the Communications Minister, is expected to start institutions like the Passport Office, the Tourism Development Authority, as well as other 30 core ministries, department, and government agencies. Now, this was after successfully piloted the program with these institutions and six others as well. The partial takeover is expected to be concluded by bringing on board all government agencies, ministries and departments by the end of this year. The required public education is expected to happen before the takeoff. Madam Esla Wusu has been giving us more details about this. Now I won't wait, I won't I will be hesitant to give full details about this program because I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day management of it. So before long, there's going to be a full public education program on it. I know they have a call center set up as well in conjunction with the National Information Technology Agency to manage customer feedback and complaints as well and action it quickly. So all this is being done so that we can have a seamless transfer. She also added that the required infrastructure are being put in place to aid this program. We're mindful of the fact that the infrastructure may not be in place around the whole country for that to be done. So we're provisioning certain centers like the, the post offices, the community information centers to be ready, internet ready, with people there to assist those who want to engage and and Ultimately, those would even end up being one-stop shops where all those who want to apply for any government service can just go there. The communications minister is also excited about the impact of this program on government's revenue and expenditure. It will enable the agencies to receive the monies directly. It will enable whoever is paying for the service have confidence that the payment has gone and been received. It would enable the GRA and the Ministry of Finance to have visibility over the internally generated funds collected by various ministries, departments and agencies. It would also improve transparency and reduce corruption. People have been shot and jailed for corruption. It still persists. We can't continue to do the same things and expect different results. And so we're trying to use technology to reduce the opportunities for people to abuse the, the, the manual processes. Madam Esleusu has also announced that the ministry is working to have a public Wi-Fi support program for some selected rural and even urban cities as well in the country. And arguably one of the most topical issues on the African continent now is the Continental Free Trade Agreement. As expected, the Ghana Investment and Opportunities Summit 2020 in London presented an opportunity for Ghana to tout the benefits of this trade deal to foreign investors. The Minister of Trade and Industry, Alan Kwadutre Mantin, says the agreement will increase intra-African trade by $35 billion annually, but warned member countries can only reap the full benefits if they honor the seven cluster agreements. He was speaking at the session, one of the sessions of the Investment and Opportunities Summit. that with a CFTA, intra-African trade will increase by as much as 35 billion US dollars per annum, or there will be an increase of 52% from our current 12% in intra-African trade by 2022. Secondly, it will address the challenge of small fragmented markets. People are not investing in Africa because we have this spaghetti bowl of fragmented markets and markets do matter for investors yes the cfta is a great idea we've talked about it but unfortunately the benefits of the cfta is not automatic each country will have to put themselves in a position to take advantage of the cfta so signing the agreement and bringing it into legal existence is good. But to take advantage of it, you actually need now to focus on these seven clusters. 
Meanwhile, several Ghanaian businesses have sealed some mouth-watering deals with their UK partners. This, according to the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce, was realized at the just-ended Ghana Investment and, Prom and Opportunities Summit in London. The program brought together over 500 business executives from Ghana and the UK as the Ghanaian government sought to position the country as a preferred destination for doing business. Executive Director of the UK Chamber of Commerce, Ajoba Chama, spoke to Joy Business. We came with about 10 companies and each one of those companies represented here has been very positive about the experience because um, it goes without saying that um, when we promote some of these uh, trade missions and we bring people along with us, if they don't get any benefit, then there's no reason for them to join us next time. So it's been very, very, very important to us to get testimonials from them. And um, as we are speaking, there's still deals being struck. We've had um, a Brexit roundtable forum for our members who export from Ghana to the UK. And they've all been uh, reassured about the interim measures put in place and the fact that they're not going to be worse off when uh, the UK finally exits the EU. So there's no miss, there's no um, supprehension at all. I, I, I'm interested in what you've been told and what they are telling you because there's still some level of uncertainty among certain people who might not necessarily be the members of your association about the way forward. What have they been telling you to also to tell businesses out there, the potential members and even those who are trying to engage partners in UK about their faith post Brexit? Okay, so everything I know is everything that you know because that's what's been in the media. Um, what our role as a chamber is, is not necessarily to stand up and speak for the UK government because we are an independent organization and uh, we would be able to put you in touch or anybody that has a concern, if they reach out to us, we'll be able to put, up, put them in touch with a relevant uh, person to speak on this at the British High Commission. So um, if you engage with any businesses in Ghana who have any concerns, just direct them to the UK Ghana Chamber of Commerce and uh, we will uh, match them with the right official. Meanwhile, the Ghana Investment Promotion Centre says it is targeting more global investment summits as part of strategies to improve capital attraction into the country. This follows what the centre says is a successful 2020 Investment and Opportunities Summit held in London. The meeting was able to bring together over 500 businesses to deliberate on the real opportunities in Ghana. The two-day event also offered government an opportunity to explain to the business community what it is doing to benefit from the Continental Free Trade Agreement. George Raffae has a wrap of the landmark business event. Mainly, this conference can be described as an interesting run. From the Ghana Stock Exchange deal to that one of the Ghana Exim Bank deal in terms of $100 million to help startups and businesses in Ghana who want to establish factories in the various districts in the country. The Ghana Stock Exchange deal was actually the technical partnership to help develop the country's bond market. And also talk about the UK deal that's going to help infrastructure in our airports as well as in the medical area. The conference brought together bankers, financiers, investors, Ghanaian businesses, SMEs, the tech entrepreneurs, and a lot of people who matter in the business and finance space here in the UK. For a lot of people, it was indeed an interesting one, looking at the conferences, the talk, the commitment, and even about the B2B engagement away from the broader government engagement. Mr. Zadeh is actually the chairman of this whole organizing committee that put this together. And for him, he's excited that indeed they've been able to close the gap between Ghana and the UK. I think it's, a, it's been a marvelous conference. It's been good. The president was here yesterday. Uh, it was a packed house. The success of a conference can be um, seen when you have a full room at the end of the second day. And what we're hoping um, to take out of this is the engagement that people um, have realized and also the all the contacts they've made, the networking, the policy issues that they've um, which has been explained to them. These are some of the things that we wanted to bring to the attention of the investing public, the potential investors. And also with the diasporans and that who wanted to go back home and invest or stay here and invest, um, they took a lot out of, they heard a lot of the speakers. So this is something that we hope 
will translate into investment back home. For Information Minister Kojo Epon Nkrumah, government is indeed committed to put in place the right structures to support firms that want to establish in the country. I mean, capital is always difficult to come by anywhere in the world. The way to ensure that you get flows of capital is to, first of all, have a fertile opportunity. Secondly, be good at marketing that fertile opportunity. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We've done some work in the last three years to put you know, government of Ghana and Ghana on a good level on the investment pedestal. What now remains is to market it in a very attractive way to the investment community so that they will see Ghana as the opportunity among the various opportunities. And that's what we've been doing here for the last two days. The president himself set the tone, and then we went into specific sectors, agriculture, industry, natural resources, digitization, financial services, uh, seeking to attract uh, investments and skills to complement what we're doing in Ghana. And we are hopeful that it would uh, deliver some good results for us at the end of the day. Uh, one critical thing often has, is said is that after the talk, how do we also prepare the ground so that when the capital comes, it stays, it doesn't go back? I mean, that's a good question. So the GIPC itself has been here. The GIPC has set up various desks, both here and in Accra, to onboard uh, people who may have the initial interest beyond this platform. You recall in my closing submissions, I was making the point that we need people to come on board and if you have any challenges whatsoever, be, be, be quick in drawing our attention to it through the GIPC so that they can facilitate what needs to be done uh, and then you can also now have an opportunity to, to settle and do the business. Well, for a lot of people, it's moving away from just the talk that has happened here to realizing these deals in Ghana and the opportunities that is actually present. But going forward, some are saying that there could be some exciting times. Looking at the deals that were struck here and looking at the fact that there were a lot more B2B engagement at the Ghana Investment and Opportunity Summit here in London. From London, this is George Yaffe reporting for Joy Business. Now, in a related development, President Akufuado is leading a government delegation to another, uh, is leading another team to the annual Davos, uh, Davos meeting in Switzerland. The president is expected to engage other world leaders and global business giants as he also joins efforts to help improve foreign investments into Ghana. Other members of the president's team include Finance Minister Ken Furiata and Chief Executive of the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, Yofi Grant. The Davos meeting is in a gathering of all business and financial space stakeholders as well as some political leaders around the world. Now, back home here in Accra, CEO of the Ghana International Trade Fair, Dr. Agnes Edu says, Ghanaian enterprises are improving with packaging and international sales at various international trade fairs. The 24th International Trade Fair is expected to see over 50 local brands exhibit their products in Ghana. Charles IT has more in this report. All is set for the 24th Ghana International Trade Fair, with this year's focus being on value addition and going global. The event, which takes place in Tamale in the northern region, is expected to see over 50 small and medium scale enterprises display their wares as they get exposed to some investment opportunities and loan facilities. But how has local businesses performed throughout the years under the International Trade Fair? Joy Business has been finding out from the CEO of the Ghana International Trade Fair, Dr. Agnes Edu. I've seen a lot of improvement in Ghana made, made in Ghana, from our normal chocolate to textiles to manufacturing. I've seen packaging take a leap. I mean, I've seen made in Ghana packaging that four years ago, people were selling things in clear containers, bacteria, this. Now you go to stores, you go to farmers markets, popping up all over the place, and made in Ghana manufacturing has become a, a, to almost to international standard, or even I can say up to international standard. The trade fair has been structured to advance efforts in ameliorating the value addition policy initiated by the government. The 24th Ghana International Trade Fair is expected to bring together investors, buyers and stakeholders to maintain the agenda of prioritizing made in Ghana products. Dr. John Hawkins, a CEO, is a director of Industrial Parks and Special Economic Zone. The government and the ministry are embarking on value addition initiatives to help our small, medium and large scale businesses to position themselves to compete favorably with their international partners. The fair is to widen investment opportunities, particularly in northern Ghana, 
Activities lined up for the 24th International Trade Fair will include seminars, derbers and exhibitions. Now, the Netherlands ambassador to Ghana, Ron Stricker, says his government will increase support to Ghana's agricultural sector through greenhouse farming. The greenhouse the modern technology being promoted to ensure all year-round farming in the country. According to the Dutch ambassador, Ghana's climatic condition is suitable for promoting greenhouse farming to improve food security. Ambassador Ron Stricker was speaking to journalists at the Greenhouse Open Day celebration at Akusi. This morning, this report. Current unpredictable climatic changes are affecting traditional farming practices in Ghana. Greenhouse farming technology is a practice in farming that has been used to improve crop yields in Africa. According to Netherlands Ambassador to Ghana, Ron Stricker, the farming practice must be promoted to ensure the importation of vegetables is significantly reduced. He said the Dutch government will identify entrepreneurs in the agricultural sector to support them adopt greenhouse farming. Hiring entrepreneurs, the, the more professional ones in farming, um, those farmers who really see their farming as uh, a profitable business or potentially profitable business, they would like to uh, go forward with farming and become more professional, more productive and so forth. Um, we try to help them. Uh, sometimes it's a subsidy for uh, making better storage or cooling facilities or for, for instance, the construction of a greenhouse. Uh, to, to basically to help them to overcome a certain threshold, to help them with their investment um, and then to make them, of course, uh, better and more productive farmers in the future. Managing Director of the Adi Investment Group, Akofata, expressed confidence that Ghana can increase food production through greenhouse farming. We get many more, for example, land banks like the one we have here in Dawenya, in Akuse, etc., and attract many more people into commercial farming, I think that productivity and agriculture will change within a very short time. So this facility will give us about 150 tons of tomatoes a year. The importation of tomatoes currently is in excess of 80,000 tons. So what I have here is a fraction, okay? But that's the way you start a business. You start a business by starting small, proving the concept, and then attracting investment to scale up. Does it really pay? Of course, it's very profitable. I would say to you, the margins of, um, of growing in a greenhouse, if you do it well, are in excess of 70%. I've decided at this point to build a foundation myself. But if you had the representative of the minister, they're willing to support. If you had the Dutch ambassador, Hearty Fresh is willing to support. The ecosystem is willing to support. My philosophy is you first and foremost prove your concept, and then you can go out to look for support to scale up. The Made in Greenhouse Open Day is an initiative by the Adi Investment Group and Hortifresh to promote the use of greenhouse technology in agriculture. The program was under the theme Maximizing Yield and Productivity. Eben Sabote's report for Joy Business. Meanwhile, President Akufuado will be inaugurating a new greenhouse village at Akumadai in the Ashanti region next month to complement the efforts of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture in boosting food production. The officer in charge of fruits and vegetables at the Greek Ministry, Esther Ejikum, who spoke on behalf of the Deputy Minister for Food and Agriculture at the Greenhouse Open Day at Akusi, hinted the new village to be opened is one of two greenhouse villages expected this year. The idea of the greenhouse village was to establish strong agribusiness in the vegetable sector to attract both Ghanaian youth and international investors. The objective is to place Ghana as a key competitor in the export of vegetables and cut flowers. The Greenhouse Village Initiative was started at Dowenya in the Greater Accra Region and further expansion are being made to the village by adding facilities like a nursery, post harvest parking house, cooling rooms, auditorium, accommodation offices, among others. Plans are far advanced to construct two more greenhouse villages across the country. For instance, one of the greenhouse villages is expected to be constructed at Weja Kaswa to serve the people of the central region. And then the western region. Another greenhouse village is expected to be constructed in Akumadan in Ashanti region to serve the people of Ashanti and the northern part of Ghana. The second one, which is the Akumadan greenhouse village, in the offensive north district is expected to be inaugurated by the president Akufuado in February 2020. Each site comprises 50 hectares of land, each of which can accommodate up to 26 greenhouse facilities. 
A first batch of 51 students have already completed training in Israel, with a second batch of 71 about to start their training. The essence of the program is to give the graduates hands-on practical training in greenhouse farming. This intervention is part of the general greenhouse agenda, which is a model under the planting for food and jobs, and is expected to boost the agenda for food security, fair prices, and exports. You're watching the marketplace live uh, on Joy News. Now, government statistician Professor Samuel Kwe Enim says calling for more investments in the, into the statistical service to help provide quality data for decision making. The government statistician made a call at the launch of the Ghana Statistical Services Corporate Plan for 2020 to 2024 in Accra. According to him, activities by the statistical service had often been supported by donor funding and called for the situation to change. The Ghana Statistical Service Corporate Plan for 2020 to 2024 is hinged on five key goals including the development of human resource, mobilization of financial resource, full integration of ICT in operations of the statistical service, as well as improving the production of statistics and its use for planning. Speaking to Joint Business Government Statistician Samuel Enin stressed on the need for more investment to support activities of the service. We put emphasis on mobilizing resources to conduct our core mandate. Ghana Statistical Service over the period has relied on donor funds in running most of our surveys and censuses. The need to invest in data is at its critical moment. And this is where we're counting on the government to relook at the investments that we put in statistics because statistics is a national asset, statistics is a treasure. So our core mandate such as inflation, GDP, and all the rudimentary statistics that is needed to run this country has to be prior, has to be prior identified and accordingly invested into. President of the International Association for Official Statistics, John Pulinga, says government investing into quality data is crucial for economic development. If you don't know, there are pressures on prices building in the supply chain because commodity prices are going up. You are taken by surprise when suddenly prices at the petrol pumps or prices in the shops are increasing. If the government gets early warning of some of these changes and early warning of the scale of those changes, it can take action. It can take action on interest rates, it can take action on taxation policy. And that's got to be something that's going to help businesses in, in the future. And prices is just one example. If you're thinking where you want to locate a shop or a, 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 an office, where are the workers going to come from? How will they get there? The statistics will give you that information also. When you think of it that way, you realise that statistics are really everywhere in our thinking. And the key point is if we improve those statistics, our thinking can also be improved. And then businesses and the government can make better choices. For Joy Business, Sheila Tamakla reporting. Now, the leadership of Sokobang Wood Village is advocating a review of some demands under the Voluntary Partnership Agreement expected to come into effect this year. Ghana and the European Union signed the Voluntary Partnership Agreement, VPA, in 2009. Mohammed Kamil Ishaq is an executive member of the Sokoban Wood Village. He tells Prince Apia implementation of the agreement will render many of the wood workers in the industry out of business. When it starts working, the VPA, it will impact negatively on the local market because I think the local market is not that prepared for the VPA and the information given to the local market hasn't got down to the operators. Yeah, even though some of the leadership have the information, but if you go down to the people today asking them about the VPA, I think about 80 or 85% will tell you that they haven't heard of the VPA or they have heard of the VPA but they don't know what the VPA is. And a lot of people will be wiped out of business. You see? So I think it will impact negatively on the local market. From business? Yeah. Okay. Because the inflow of Lama will be reduced drastically due to the measures put in place per the laws, regulations of the VPA. Because we have the wood tracking system and other things that is captured in the Ghana Legality Assurance System, the GHLAS. So you have to work within the uh, laws of the GHLAS. 
from the sourcing of the timber in the forest to the log yard or the sawmill to the local market or to the export market. The laws have been laid down in which you have to follow the laws. So working within the laws of the, uh, the, the requirements of the law is going to affect business, business. We were in chainsawing and this VPA thing come that we should all work under the law. So working under the law, it means we have to change from what we are used to. So it's a problem. It's a problem. And even just like, just like he mentioned, the sawmills who are going to supply the local market cannot. The sawmills are not enough to supply the local market. Well, so that will be it. It's been a great pleasure having you on board today's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for watching. My name is Imano Ampuachi. We have to have a good afternoon.